What's up, everybody? I'm going to keep myself in the corner for as long as I can. I don't remember where I put things on my screen, so I might have to minimize my face, but I'm here for now, up here. Uh, today, we're going to continue to talk about Lewis structures. Note, if you missed class, then when you see an opportunity to answer a question, and I'll try to make it clear, um, you will have to make a copy of this set of slideshow, this set of slides, and submit it with your final response on it um, and the notes that you took during class. That, that means like the questions you answered during class because, uh, you know, I need, I need to see some sort of participation. There's no just like, oh, I'm only gonna do the exit ticket because I was absent from class because that's not been working out for folks who've been doing that and they've been not passing them like ever. So I wanna make sure that you are passing chem. This is for you, not for like me, like being like, oh, I gotta do work. Um, trying to be fair to you uh, and I want you to pass chemistry. I want you to do well and I want you to understand it too. Uh, God forbid. Oh, wow. First first thing, my screen's already in the way. Okay, got to set a the do not questions, pause and do them. Okay, uh, neon. Neon's in our final column. Our final column, remember that's column number eight. Eight means that neon has eight valence electrons. So the answer to this should be eight. Explain why this is, uh, is this a correct Lewis structure for neon? Let's count the number of valence electrons we see on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, that can't be right. It needs to have eight. There should be two more valence electrons here. Number three, predict if it's easy or hard to give a valence electron, uh, oh, so I should say to a fluorine atom. Uh, the correct Lewis diagram is actually shown right here. So this Lewis diagram shows it for F, fluorine. And we count that it as seven. And we're trying to say, is it easy or hard to give it a valence electron? Hmm. Well, if I gave it one, it would go from seven to eight. Ooh, and remember, eight is great. Okay, well, the fluorine's probably gonna like that. And so I'm gonna say it's easy. It's easy to give this fluorine one more valence electron. It's at seven, it would love to go to eight. Okay, last class, uh, we were drawing Lewis structures from a periodic table. So we started with something like this. Uh, I'm going to say like, hey, draw a Lewis structure for phosphorus, say. So you looked at the uh, periodic table. You said like, oh, P, that one is phosphorus. Okay, I need to uh, now use the symbol and use what column it's in. So it's on eight, seven, six. Oh, it's in column five right here. That means it's a P with one, two, three, four, five dots. Five balance electrons because the dots are balance electrons. Those outermost electrons on the outermost orbital that has electrons in it for an atom. All right, folks, so here's a time for you to practice. So pause, draw a Lewis diagram for a sulfur atom. The instructions on how to do that are right here. Okay, so what that looks like is, again, we identify the column, not eight, not seven, it's in six. That means it's got the, we see the element symbol right here, S for sulfur. Uh, it's in the six column, six valence electrons, six dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, S in the center. Notice that no side on this ever goes above two. One, two, one, two, three, four. So we never, we never put like three on the same side. It has a max of two and there's four sides on the letter. There's top, bottom, right, and left. Cool, so this class where I'm gonna start minimizing my face. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, let me put my little thing up there. This class, we're gonna talk about more practice with Lewis structures. We're gonna get into more complicated Lewis dot structures. Does anybody know who this is? This is my main man, uh, Ray Lewis, a famous Baltimore Raven, uh, my favorite football team. And here, right, we got the learning goal that we're actually assessing for this. And this says, I can construct Lewis models of atoms and molecules to explain patterns of bonding. How come things bond the way that they bond? And we're gonna get more into like, well, what is a bond today? So exit ticket review. So this is reviewing the exit ticket from earlier in the week. So draw a Lewis structure for a calcium atom, symbol CA. We look at the beginning part of a periodic table. We say like, ooh, first column right here, one valence electron. Second column right here, two valence electrons. Remember the stuff, there's a lot of stuff in the middle that we ignore. So this is not the third column here. There's a lot of stuff in the middle that we ignore. Then we get to the second column here. Ooh, calcium, CA. So that means CA, two electrons. Nice. If you had an electron here and an electron on the other side of CA, or like on top and bottom, those I'm all counting is right as well. 
So we have to explain if this is correct for a carbon atom. Carbon is in the fourth column. Ooh, this has five valence electrons. That can't be right. It needs to have four. So instead, we're drawing a C, because C is right for carbon, but it's got to have four valence electrons, not five. So in the last question was to explain uh, if the following is correct for a Lewis dot diagram of F2. We read that F2 means that it was bonded together. When we have the little number down here, it's telling us something about the way that atoms are bonded. So if we're bonded together, it needs to be something linking them together. Over here, we see that they're linked together. In, in this side, you could say like, well, this is F2 because each fluorine atom brings in seven valence electrons. Well, yes, they bring in seven valence electrons, but they need to be linked together. When they're linked together, they're allowed to share them. That makes it that this fluorine atom, this F atom right here, has got one, two, three, four, five, six, and it gets to use both atoms that are, or sorry, both electrons that are in the bond. So it gets to use these two. Over here on this F atom, it's the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then gets to use both in the bond. They get to share. It gets to use its own electron that it brought to the party and this electron that this fluorine brought to the party. So both of them are happy. So this one is wrong. That one was right. Okay, a little bit of story time here. Why should we care? You may be like, Murray, why are we drawing a bunch of dots, lines? Who cares about this? So I'm gonna ask for your help, folks. There's a carbon monoxide leak in Murray's apartment. And this is not a, this is, this is a true story, not clickbait. This is happening like early pandemic and like honestly scared me quite a bit. Uh, so if anybody's ever heard of carbon monoxide, it is a deadly gas. And it's a gas that you can't smell and it'll kill you very, very quickly, very quickly. And I'm gonna tell you that carbon monoxide is made out of carbon and oxygen molecules. So you might say like, ah, yeah, carbon and oxygen molecules. Carbon monoxide, wait a second. Or is it carbon and oxygen? Oh no, what? It seems like we have to actually understand the difference between these two things. To carbon monoxide is really, really deadly. But one of these is only carbon monoxide. The other one's not carbon monoxide. So the way that atoms are bonded together changes what they do. The difference here is carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. This is C bonded to O versus C bonded to two different O's. We've got our funny little thing here. Carbon dioxide. Man, I love killing humans. Carbon monoxide. Nah, -uh, I love killing them more. So carbon monoxide, you make that when you breathe. It's harmful if you breathe in a lot of it. Carbon monoxide, on the other hand, is made by household appliances like a stovetop that's not burning all of the gas that it's releasing, um, a laundry that isn't necessarily electric that might use some propane, uh, an oven that uses propane, it uses these gases that don't fully burn. Um, it's not made by a household appliance that's working correctly. It's a household appliance that's maybe not working perfectly fine. So don't necessarily worry. As long as your carbon monoxide detectors in your house do work. Those are important because carbon monoxide, again, you can't smell it and it'll kill you quickly. And it was leaking in my apartment in March. And it scared me because I literally was so lightheaded. I had to like hang my head out of my apartment window. And I was freaking out that I was like going to pass out uh, and totally suffocate. Um, it's harmful if you breathe in just a little bit of carbon monoxide. So knowing the difference between these two things seems pretty important. Seemed pretty important to me earlier this year. Um, okay. For these next three slides, you've got a set of true and false. And I promise that when I say it's true, it's true. And I promise when I say it's false, it's false. So you're using the, this slide, this slide, and this slide all together to answer these three questions here. So you got a question. What are the, how many electrons are dots worth? How many electrons are lines worth? How do you find the total number of electrons in the whole molecule? Because all of these are, this is one molecule right here. This is a molecule right here. This is a molecule right here. They all have a different number of total valence electrons. How do you find that out? So take a second to pause and figure that out. Okay, each dot worth one, each line worth two. How do you find the total number? You add them all together. So I'd say like, okay, the dots here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight come from dots. And then each of the lines are two. So I've got eight total. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 total balance electrons. Ooh, it looks like that's true. 
Okay. So let's dive into this a little bit more. So this is true here, another true statement. Hydrogen has two valence electrons around it. You might say like, well, Murray, I only see one line here. Reminder that this hydrogen is touching this line, so it gets to use both of these valence electrons. Hydrogen breaks the rule. Remember, eight is not great for hydrogen. Two is glue. Hydrogen's special because it's the first atom on the periodic table. It's super small. It can't really handle eight total valence electrons. Um, it's also true here that oxygen has eight balance electrons. So we'll see that slowly. One, two, three, four gets to use both of these. Five, six gets to use both of these. Seven, eight. Uh, let's think about that for boron here. Boron's another one that breaks the rule that I'm not going to ever quiz you on. Boron's fine with six. This has got one, two, three, four, five, six, uses all of these. Chlorine has eight balance electrons. Chlorine, again, each chlorine gets to use the bond that's touching to it. So it's got all of these single, single uh, unbonded electrons and these bonded electrons. So I want you to pause to think about somebody that you have a close bond with. What makes you close to that person? And a reminder that if you're like watching this uh, and you weren't here for class, you should be answering these on your own set of slides. You should be making a copy of the set of slides. Because a reminder, I only make it like view only. You're gonna make a copy and attach that with your uh, submission. Here's something that I have a close bond with. This is my partner. Uh, their name is Flora or Frank or Frankie, depending on how they're feeling about their gender expression of the day. Uh, they're a cool cat. I love them a whole ton. Um, I say I, I have a close bond with them. And what I think when I talk about my close bond with them, that I would say there's an attractive force between us. I would say that there's something that pulls us together, you know, that I don't like being cropped out of the picture and they don't like being cropped out of my picture. There's something that pulls us back together. I'm gonna to think about this like line as an attractive force that pulls us back together and pulls us back together. It pulls us close. The same thing happens between atoms here. So here's an F atom, here's an F atom. They wanna be friends. They're gonna have some sort of attractive force. And when they do that, they no longer are separated, they come together. That electrons are the things that are drawing them together. They realize that they can share them. So here's it laid out a little more clearly. The single electrons over here meet up in the center of the atom and say, hey, let's share. That'd be cool because I want eight valence electrons. You want eight valence electrons. What if we just shared? Okay, here's a question for you. Where are the non-bonding electrons here? The electrons that are not part of the bond. So you're answering that on your own slide, it's the ones that are on the outside. So this fluorine's got six electrons that are not part of the bond. So does this one. In the center, we have where are the sharing bonded electrons? They're right in the center. These two electrons are part of the bond. There's only one bond between this fluorine atom and this fluorine atom. All right, got a little bit of a quiz here. Same or different? This one is the same. So these ones that are in the center, if they're shared and they're touching and they're really close, these two F atoms really close, we draw a line between them to represent their bond. So this one, same or different? This one is different, folks. Let's think about it. Uh, over here, there is one set of electrons in between the two oxygen atoms. Over here, there are actually two sets. This can be replaced with one bond here. So there's actually two bonds over here. There are more total electrons over here than there are over here. I want you to take a second to list how many valence electrons does each oxygen atom have? How many valence electrons does this oxygen have access to? How many electrons does this have access to? What about this atom and this atom? Pause and take a second to think about that. Over here, each of these have access to six uh, let's look at it. One, two, three, four. It gets used ones in the middle, five, six. Same thing over here. One, two, three, four, used in the middle, five, six. Over here, this uses eight. And this one can also use eight. It's got access to both of these pairs in the center. It's got its two, it's got each one's got one, two, three, four single electrons. And they got each have a pair of bonded electrons to go in the center. So there's one, two, three, four in the center of them. All right, quick quiz. Uh, which one of these is correct? And we see that we can't have, we've never seen three electrons all on the same side of a letter. That's not how we represent this. We represent it with three single electrons. 
or we're drawing an X over it. All right, folks, what do we think? Same or different? Pause, look at these two and be like, are they really the same? So answer here, yes, they are the same. For this oxygen right here, I'm not representing its inside orbital. Look at these, these are not valence electrons. I don't even draw them. And I don't, they're not drawn in right here. I'm only drawing in the outside electrons. Those are the valence electrons here. Let's look at this even further. Look at the hydrogen and the oxygen. They meet up in the center and look, one, two electrons are part of that bond to oxygen and hydrogen. And over here, oxygen and hydrogen, there's two electrons part of that bond. We see that much more simple over here in this picture. So we're talking about which one's faster to draw. The reason that we have Lewis structures is not so they help us differentiate carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, or one of those kills us fast and one of those kills us slow. It also just is faster for us to represent atoms and still communicate all the information that we need to. All right, well, we ask ourselves like, well, Murray, how do you get this like H2O molecule here? Well, we ask ourselves like, well, what, what do the individual Lewis structures look like? That's what I drew over here. O brings six valence electrons and each hydrogen brings one. So think about this, hydrogen brings one, oxygen brings six, this one brings one. Remember that we get these numbers from the periodic table. What column are they part of? We add one, six, one, they all meet up together so that the hydrogen's got access to two, hydrogen's got access to two, oxygen's got access to eight. There's eight total over here. Looks like we didn't create any electrons out of thin air. That sounds pretty cool to me. We can't do that. All right, here's another example. CH4, it's no longer H2O. This is now an example of methane, a different molecule. Carbon brings four valence electrons. Each hydrogen brings one. We got that right here. Here's carbon in the center. One, two, three, four. Hydrogens each bring in one. Look, they're like kind of separated right here. Let's link these all together. Let's push them all together. There wants to be an attractive force between these. Friends just want to meet up and have an attractive force. And boom, we replace these little single electrons with bonds now. These are bonds. They were in the same thing. Remember, there's two electrons in each of the bonds. Break time. Uh, if you want to check out Exodus, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a Bob Marley album. Really dope. Um, in the following slides, so on your set of slides, um, if you are doing this out on your own time, you should use this link right here that'll bring you to a periodic table. You should try and answer these questions that are on the following slides. I've leveled them. They're like level one questions. There's level two questions, level three questions, and a level four question. Take some time. Uh, that this, this inside of class, I'm giving like almost 30 minutes to do this. So please take your time. Pause. Make a solid attempt at all those. Uh, if you want to, I know that drawing is kind of hard without the pair deck. So um, you can draw on a piece of paper and take a picture and insert it. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, or if you learn of a way to just like uh, edit the thing and just like, oh, I'm going to draw like a, an SI here. Um, and then you want to draw some dots using like stuff up here with the shapes. Fine if you do that too. That's fine with me. Uh, as long as you're not like stealing them from the internet, I don't really care. Um, I will show you the answers to these right now. So pause first and try them on your own because you're not going to pass if you're not practicing. Um, all right. So the level one question, aluminum, it's in the third column. Remember, eight, seven, six, five, four, third column, aluminum, three dots. Silicon, it's in the fourth column, four dots. Krypton, notice how I didn't give you, you need to like look this, you still need to look this up on the periodic table. Just because I didn't give it to you, the reason it's a level two is because you need to know in order to do this, you need to look it up on the periodic table. You can't just like, unless you memorize that where Krypton is. It's in the eighth column, it's got eight valence electrons. Lithium, first column, one valence electron. Oxygen, six column, six valence electrons. Uh, a Lewis diagram for molecular chlorine. This is where it's like level three. This is really where we want to end up being by the end of next class. So if you're not quite here yet, this is where we're working towards. So uh, each chlorine atom brings with it seven valence electrons. So in the end, there should be 14 total. There should be 14 total. Um, 
reminder that we want to check for eight is great on each of these chlorine atoms. So look, let's check on this chlorine atom. Let's see if, let's see if Murray did this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, gets used both of these, eight. Awesome. This one over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, this one is also eight. What about the total number of electrons? Cl2, each one's bringing in seven. There should be 14 total electrons inside of, total valence electrons inside of this whole molecule. So let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we only count it once. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Looks like Murray did this right. Nice job, Murray. All right, our last question. This is a level four. Um, here's just an example of the answer. I'm not going to review it right now. So right now, I'm not going to obviously give you the answer to the exit ticket, but here is your exit ticket question. You are drawing a Lewis diagram for Li2O. That is going to be one oxygen in the center of two lithium atoms. A reminder that lithium is like hydrogen. Two is glue for it, so it doesn't need to satisfy the octet rule. Eight is not necessarily great for it. You uh, should probably draw a picture of it in some way. Uh, again, you can like use the text box up here and like make letters if you want, or if you want to uh, draw it on a piece of paper. Make sure that you use like a thick marker or uh, take a good picture of it so that I can. Great. It don't have like any other answers inside of the picture. It makes it easier and more clear for me to understand what your answer is. That's going to be it for me today, folks. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Deuces.